Hello, family and friends. Hey, come on in, come on in, come on in. Love to see you tonight. Come on in. Bible study has started. I'll wait for a few people. God bless you tonight. Hey, Brother Worthy, God bless you. Hey, Sister Sherry, God bless you. God bless you. A little windy out here tonight. We'll wait for a few more people to come in. Hey, Tasha Fraley. God bless you, my daughter. Hey, Brother Doug, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. You guys come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, Nikki Preston, God bless you. How are you doing? Hey, Brother Lonnie Sadbury, God bless you. Good to see you. Hey, Keisha Parks, God bless you. Hey, Sister Kathy, God bless you. Come on in. Hey, Tiffy Coco, God bless you. Hey, Rashawn Washington, God bless you. Dr. Aqua, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Come on in. We're going to wait just a little bit. As you can tell, we got a little choppy water out here. Hey, Sister Andella, uh, Leslie and Josiah. Hey, Renee Rodriguez, God bless you. Rainy Moore, Carl Stewart. Hey, man, you guys come on in. Hey, Sister Lilia, God bless you. We're going to have a great time tonight. Hey, Sister Valerie, God bless you. Hey, Sister Belinda. Hey, man, hey, man. You guys come on in. Gonna wait just a little bit. Pardon my tardiness. Had a little choppy water. A lot of wind going on. So y'all forgive all of this, but I promise. Hey, Brother Frank, Sister Deb, God bless you. Sister Faithia. Hey, the Carlos Spearman. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, Sister Mary Simon. God bless you. Come on in. Awesome, 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 awesome. Hey, Sister Tony, God bless you. Hey, God bless you. Hey, is the volume all right? Hey, Sister Margie Foster, God bless you. Deidre Pearson, amen. God bless you. Hey, Sister Aileen, amen. You guys come on in tonight. Hey, can somebody let me know? Um, hey, Barama Smith, God bless you. And everybody let me know if um, the sound is okay. Hey, Brother Al, God bless you. Hey, Sister Tracy, we're going to get started in just a moment. Hey, Sister Renee, somebody give me a thumbs up. Let me know that the sound is okay. You can hear me good. All right, all right. That's great. That's great. That's great. Hey, Shanara Hunter, God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. A little windy out on the lake tonight, but it's good. Feels great out here. Amen. Listen. We're going to start praying. Hey, J-Love, God bless you. All right, all right, all right. God bless you. Listen, let's go ahead and pray. I uh, want to get into it tonight. Um, want to, if you'd like, have any questions. Hey, Donna Michelle, have any questions? Krista Taylor, if you have any questions, Jan Mack, God bless you. Any questions uh, about the sermon or comments about the sermon on Sunday? Of course, we have two more installments, and uh, but we're going to get into the book of Jeremiah if you don't have any questions about Sunday's message. All right? All right. Let's pray. Gracious God, how we love you tonight, and thank you for another Wednesday evening in the Word. Thank you, God, for this great weather you've given us and uh, how it cleared up from this morning and all of the storms. And so, gracious God, we're just believing now that you are with us. We can feel you in every breeze. We can hear, hear you in every lap of the water and every chirp of a bird. Oh, God, we, we know you are present with us. And so, God, we thank you tonight for giving us the utterance of your word tonight. Would you bless those who are already on, and then, oh God, bless those who are on their way. Thank you, God, for the privilege of technology, where we don't have to drive and get dressed up, oh God, to come. Uh, we can just, in the comfort of our own homes, or our offices, or our cars, oh God, enjoy study with you. Now, God, give us revelation knowledge tonight. 
uh, give us understanding, give us discernment of your word. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen. Hey, Felicia Holloway, God bless you. God bless you. Listen, are there any questions or comments regarding Sunday's message? I didn't sign up for this, but I'm built for it. Of course, we're going to have uh, two more installments, as the Lord says. Uh, and so I don't want to blow by that. I know that was one of our things that we did. Uh, when we were meeting in person, we would always discuss Sunday's message. So if you have anything, hey, Sister Celeste, if you have anything, we'd love, love, love uh, to discuss it with you. Uh, if not, we will get into the lesson for tonight. I'm excited about uh, the lesson. Amen. Listen, also, what you put in the, hey, Sister Joy, what you put in your comments, if you would be interested in a Zoom Bible study. We would also be on Facebook. We would not give up Facebook, but so everybody could, you know, see each other. You could raise your hand and ask questions in real time. Uh, just let me know at some point during the night if you would be interested in doing a Zoom and Facebook combined. Hey, Brother Jay. So we're just doing some preliminary things right now before we get, hey, Sister Norma, God bless you. Uh, before we get into the lessons. Any questions about Sunday, if so, type them in. And then, of course, if you would like to do Zoom, uh, where we could uh, see one another, uh, but also do Facebook. We're just trying to expand our capacity to reach as many people as we can. And, of course, I am trying to um, increase my um, technology capacity whereby we can handle all of that okay okay because i'd like for you to see you guys as well all right let's get into the lesson let's get into the lesson how many of you read ahead how many of you read ahead to jeremiah 28 i want to do a little recap tonight for those of you who are joining us for the very first time one welcome hey sister mary uh welcome uh to saint john northwest the construction zone where we are building lives and community through Jesus Christ. This week, let me just tell you this, we have had a great time uh, distributing meals for our senior citizens in the Northwest quadrant of the city. Uh, and uh, God has been blessing us. I think we have uh, distributed um, uh, over 600 or 700 meals already. Hopefully by the end of the week, we would have distributed over a thousand meals. And next week we hope to, um, uh, hey, Sister Venora, uh, distribute to double our distribution. So you guys keep praying. All right. Keep praying for us. All right. Let's get into the lesson tonight. Uh, I want to take us back because I want to refresh our memory uh, regarding Jeremiah 25 uh, with Jeremiah and what he told the nation of Judah. Hey, Sister Margie, God bless you tonight. So if you will get your Bibles and your devices and find yourself in the 25th chapter of Jeremiah, all right, 25th chapter of Jeremiah, would like to take you there. For those of you who have been traveling with us for the last couple of weeks, it's been a riveting discussion um, for um, uh, the book of Jeremiah, we understand that Jeremiah was called to do a very difficult task, uh, but he took it on. Uh, and I and I bet you Jeremiah would agree uh, with the sermon title on Sunday. I didn't sign up for this, uh, but I'm built for it. Uh, when God told them that, hey, I'm calling you, I'm assigning you, I've anointed you, uh, and you're going to have to do everything I tell you to do. You're going to have to say everything I tell you to do, and you can't be afraid of of their faces when you say it. And so we have been traveling. God has been uh, chastising, uh, taking to task uh, the uh, tribe of Judah, nation of Judah. And uh, he's been telling them, listen, I've been talking to you all of this time. You've been disobeying me. I've given you chance after chance. And he said, and even now, if you would turn uh, from your wicked ways, if you would reform your actions, I would even relent 
and what? Take back my punishment. But he says, you know what? It's no way. Hey, Jerry Brooks, that you are going to um, uh, lament and turn, repent and turn from your wicked ways because you're so full of yourself. And he says, and if you think for a moment uh, that I care about your temples, I don't. I'm going to destroy them and I'm going to punish you, not because I'm a mean guy, but because you're a disobedient people. And so that brings us to chapter 25, uh, where we take a look at uh, Jeremiah talking to the people on behalf of God. Now remember, uh, the, the prophet had two jobs. You guys will hear me say this over and over again. The prophet had two jobs. One, to represent God before the people and then represent the people before God. All right, hey, Sister Kim. And so let's go at 25.8. Get there in your Bibles, 25, 8. And I promise you, I'm going to give you the extra time over tonight. All right. Therefore, the Lord Almighty says this, because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to pay attention to that. Uh, he says, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was not a believer in Yahweh, but he says, I'm going to use Nebuchadnezzar to serve me. He says, he is the king of Babylon, declares the Lord, and I will bring them against this land, talking about Jerusalem now, and its inhabitants, and against all the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and everlasting ruin. Now, let's take a look at verse 11. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland and these nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. I want you to write that down. I want you to underline that. Underline 70 years. God is telling them this is how long your punishment is going to be. Are, are y'all grabbing that? He says, this is how long your punishment is going to be. 12, but when the 70 years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nations, the land of Babylonians, for their guilt, declares the Lord. In other words, I'm going to make your enemies uh, my tool, my servants to punish you, right? And then I'm going to turn around and punish them for punishing you. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. That's a complicated God right there. Take a look at this in 13. I will bring upon that land all the things I have spoken against it, all that were written in this book and prophesied by Jeremiah against all the nations. They themselves will be enslaved by many nations and great kings, and I will repay them according to their deeds. Now, we have heard the word of the Lord. All right. We've heard the word of the Lord. So we went through and we talked about in 26 last week how Jeremiah was threatened with death because he was doing exactly what the Lord had told them to do. So turn in your Bibles there. Turn in your Bibles there. Jeremiah had already been warned by God that if you say everything you're supposed to say, if you do everything you're supposed to do, if you go to everybody I tell you to go to, listen, they're going to try to kill you, but I promise you this, they will not overcome you for I will rescue you. So we're in chapter 26, just doing a brief overview. So take a look at this. Early in the reign of Jehoiakim, Remember, we're going to have two names that sound familiar. We're going to hear Jehoiakim and we're going to hear Jehoiakin, C-H-I-N. All right, don't get those two confused. Uh, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Keep hearing this. The word comes from the Lord, not the people, not the priest, not the prophet, but the word comes from the Lord. He says, stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. We've heard this before. 
Do not omit a word. Even if you are uncomfortable with what you have to say, don't omit anything. Or are you with me? We're in 26.3. He says, perhaps they will listen and each will turn from his evil way. Then I'll relent. That's what I was talking about before. God is still trying to give Judah an opportunity to turn things around. He said, then I'll relent and not bring on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil they have done. He says, say to them, we're in 26.4, say to them, this is what the Lord says. If you do not listen to me, and follow my law, which I have set before you. And if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, God says again and again, right? Though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and this city an object of cursing among all the nations. He says, in other words, I'm going to embarrass you. At first, you were uh, viewed as the apple of my eye. Uh, you were viewed as an indestructible people. Uh, you were viewed as a people whose God would come and rescue you from any and every situation, whose God would beat up on your enemies and destroy them, he says, but no more. Now, let's take a look at 26.7 very quickly. The priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. Pay attention to this, pastors, preachers, those of you who uh, speak the word of the Lord. But as soon as Jeremiah finished telling all the people everything the Lord had commanded him to say, the priest the prophets and all the people seized him and said, you must die. I, I really need you to pay attention to that because these were his peers. These were his colleagues. These were people who should have been on his side. But the priest and the prophets and all the people seized him and said, you must die. Look at this. Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name that this house will be like Shiloh? Remember, Shiloh was destroyed and this city will be desolate and deserted. He says, why do you have to tell the truth? Why do you have to always bring what the Lord says? Can't you just give us some feel good, good news? And, and we see that happening on a national scene. I, I want you to see that. We see that happening on the national scene, that anybody who dares uh, to speak the truth of how tough of a situation COVID-19 is, uh, all of a sudden they disappear from the podium. Uh, they're no longer on the news circuit. Uh, they're no longer viewed as an expert. In, in other words, they're castigated, right? And so I want us to be careful as we are listening in this season uh, to who is telling the truth. And we're going to need to discern uh, that. We won't be able to hear that with natural ears. We'll have to do that in prayer. We'll have to hear that through meditation. So, so I want you, I want you to take a look at this when Jeremiah is telling them exactly what the Lord says and they get upset. So here we go. We're in 2610. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went up from the royal palace to the house of the Lord and took their places at the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then the priest and the prophet said to the officials and all the people, this man should be sentenced to death because he has prophesied against this city. You have heard it with your own ears. They did not like the fact that one Jeremiah had told them just what the Lord had. See, they didn't want to take it up with God. They wanted to take it up with the human. They wanted to take it up. But how many of you know that even if you destroy, even if you malign the reputation of the human that God has sent, God's word does not go anywhere. It says the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God, what, shall stand forever. I wish I had a witness out there. So then Jeremiah talks again. We're in 2612. Are y'all there? 2612. Then Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, the Lord sent me, hear this, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city, all the things you have heard. He says, now reform your ways, your actions, and obey the Lord your God. Don't obey me. He says, the Lord sent me, 
It's the Lord's words and you need to obey the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent and not bring the disaster he has pronounced against you. He says, as for me, take a look at it. We're in 14. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me whatever you think is good and right. Be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. Listen, I know it was difficult. It was difficult for them to hear uh, that the Lord was planning on hear this, using their enemies against them. So I want you to be able to see that this is not new. Can you travel with me to Proverbs 16, 5? Proverbs 16, 5. Hey, Dr. Claire Henry, Proverbs 16, 5. Will you go there? Proverbs 16, 5. I'm going to get it too. Proverbs 16, 5. Will you go there with me? In fact, in fact, do this. Go to 16.4. Go to 16.4. 16.4. Proverbs 16.4. When you have it, say amen. Yeah, yeah. Proverbs 16.4. Sorry, sorry about that, guys. It's going to be 4 and 5, all right? It's going to be 4 and 5. Proverbs 16.4 and 5. And I want you to see. I want you to see uh, that God is consistent throughout his word. Look at this. The Lord works out everything for his own ends, his own purpose. Even the wicked, watch this now, for a day of disaster. God even uses the wicked for his own means, for his own purpose. Take a look at this. In five, the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, child of God. They will not go unpunished. I, I know we're, we're sitting here fretting, trying to figure out how we could get back at this person and get back at this person. And God says, listen, you don't even have to worry about any of that. The proud of heart, those who are wicked will not go unpunished. But God says, I will use even the wicked. I'll use your enemies to chastise you. He said, oh, Rev, I don't believe that. Okay, fine. Would you travel with me to Habakkuk? Travel with me to Habakkuk. I want you to see that there is a prophetic formula that we will see over and over in Old Testament scripture you'll see the prophets have a complaint and then you'll have uh, Yahweh's response. You can, you can uh, uh, test that all the way out uh, with all of the prophets because all of the prophets um, aren't sure what God is up to. God tells them one particular thing. It doesn't make sense to them. God says, do this. God says, say that. Uh, God says, uh, put on a particular garment and go throughout the city, right? So they're saying, God, I don't understand what you're up to, but I want you to follow me to Habakkuk. Can you get there toward, toward the end, almost the end of the Old Testament, right before Zephaniah? You said, where is that? Yeah, just go to the index. You're all right. Go to the index. I want us to start. It's a very small book. Very small book. Very small book. Habakkuk is also a prophet. Habakkuk 1. Habakkuk 1. So I'm, I'm doing a little teaching. Do a little teaching here to tell us how the prophets uh, really had trouble watching God use the wicked against them. They said, God, listen, we have not been that evil that you have to use the same ones we've been fighting against, right, to punish us. And then you're going to turn around and punish them. So you're going to hear something very familiar. Those of you who are Bible readers, you're going to hear something very familiar in this passage of Scripture. So if you'll follow me, if you're there in Habakkuk 1, some may call this Habakkuk, uh, but, but I call it Habakkuk. Uh, if you're there, uh, read along with me. 
Here is the prophet's complaint. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. And you're going to also, if you would uh, pay attention to some of Martin King's uh, speeches, you would hear a lot of the complaints in his speeches that he uses from Old Testament prophets, uh, especially Amos. Uh, but Habakkuk, he's going to say in verse uh, 2 of that first chapter, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? Has anybody ever felt like that? Lord, I've been praying, I've been praying and crying, crying and praying, right? How long, oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen or cry out to you? Violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Is anybody getting this? Why do you tolerate wrong? destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Are, are y'all hearing this complaint? Are you hearing this complaint? I mean, anybody in Chicago could say that right about now. Anybody in Detroit could say that right about now. Uh, anybody in Houston could say that right about now. All right. How long, how long, how long, how long? I really want to take I really want to take my time with that because I want you to see that there is a common thread uh, throughout the prophetic writings in the Old Testament uh, that there is always a complaint uh, because believe it or not and I know many people don't don't think this you may think that the congregation has complaints the congregation has questions for God but so does the prophet. So does the preacher. So does the pastor, because we're wrestling with many of the same things that you're wrestling with. We're wondering, how long, God, are we going to be out uh, uh, of in-person worship? How long, God, is this virus going to run rampant uh, in our world? How long, God, before they get a vaccine? How long, God, am I going to still uh, be uh, uh, going from month to month and always have more month than money? How long, God, am I going to have these? kids in my house. Come on. Anybody, anybody, anybody has asked God how long? Prophet is saying, how long must I call for help? And it seems as if you're deaf. He says, I cry out to you. Violence. Don't you see everything that's going on? He says, but you don't save anybody. He says, why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Here's the real complaint now. We know God cannot stand sin, but to Habakkuk, it seems as if God is dismissing sin. That it's like, hey, it says God's eyes can't even stand to look upon sin. And the prophet's complaint here is, hey, it seems as if you're tolerating it now. Listen, he says, destruction and violence are before me. There is strife conflict the bounds. He says, therefore, the law is paralyzed. He says, nobody's even paying attention to the law. He said, and justice never prevails. It doesn't matter how many times we take these jokers to court. It doesn't even matter how many times they're indicted. It seems as if they always get off scot-free. Is there anybody out there, come on now, hearing the complaint from the prophet? Watch this. The wicked, him and the righteous so that justice is perverted. Now, so we have the prophetic complaint. Y'all got that part? Might wanna underline some of that. So verses one through five is the prophetic complaint. So now we have the answer from the deity, D-E-I-T-Y. Now we have the answer from the Lord. We have the answer uh, from Yahweh. Watch this. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told are y'all are y'all there with me y'all there with me he says I am raising up Babylonians y'all better look at this God and the Babylonians were their enemies right he says, I'm raising up Babylonians. Usually uh, when we would hear in the Old Testament that God was raising up somebody, God was raising up a prophet or raising up a judge, right? To help out Israel. 
So to raise out somebody to help them, but watch the text. God is now saying, I'm raising up somebody to punish you. Wow. Wow. I hope you see that tonight. I, I hope I hope that you are uh, seeing the juxtaposition between what uh, Habakkuk is complaining about and what Jeremiah is going through. Uh, God raised up Jeremiah to help them, uh, to help Judah, but they rejected him. And Habakkuk is now saying, wait a minute, you're going to raise up. Thank you, Andrella. Amen. Now you're going to raise up my enemy, he said, I'm raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own. He says, they are a feared, we're in seven. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. So could it be, could it be that God has also, come on now, uh, commandeered, that's the word I want to use, commandeered this virus to do his bidding. Come on, there are more people who are in church now than have ever been, right? Are you with me? More people that are online looking for a word, looking for a, a prayer group, right? Could it be that everybody now, watch this, everybody now uh, has an altar in their own house, but would always wait to get to the altar at the church house. I saw something cute the other day uh, where it had a little quip between uh, uh, a supposed uh, devil uh, and then the Lord, and, and it's Satan saying, uh, uh-huh, see, I've closed down all of your churches, right? And then the Lord says, uh, no, you haven't. I've just opened one in every home. Are, are y'all with me? Come on. There are people praying now, praying more so than ever before, right? Uh, parents are now teaching their own children more than before. I, I just want you to get this. Could it be that God is, has commandeered, right? This virus to do his bidding. Are, are you there? Are you there? He says they are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own order. He says their horses are swifter than leopards. That's a fast horse right there. Fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops, gallops headlong and their horsemen come from afar. All right. So this is God now saying uh, that uh, these are the people, the kinds of people that I'm going to raise up. He says they're already, he says they're already bad to death, right? He says they've got it going on. He says they are treacherous people, but I'm going to raise them up even more so. Now, so we have the first complaint. Watch the prophetic uh, formula. Uh, we have the first complaint of Habakkuk, and we have the first response from the deity, from the Lord. So now we're going to get into first chapter, 12th verse, the second prophetic complainer. Y'all, y'all keeping up with me? Y'all, y'all there with me? Because I'm, I'm going to bring this together. I'm going to bring this together. Uh, here is Habakkuk's second complaint. He says, Oh Lord, are you not from everlasting to everlasting? He says, my God, my Holy One, we will not die. He says, oh Lord, you have appointed them to execute judgment. He says, oh rock, you have ordained them to punish. Watch this. Watch this. Look at, look at 13. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. He is reminding God of who he knows God to be. Are, are y'all that man? I, uh, I, 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 hope you, I hope you get this because when we talk about praying God's word back to him, Habakkuk is uh, reminding God, God, this is who I've always known you to be, right? Right? You can't even look upon evil and see now, now we get to, we're not, we're still in Easter tide. And so when we talk about Jesus on the cross and saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because God couldn't even stand. Are y'all putting this together? Couldn't even stand to look upon sin because he says the one who had no sin became sin for us. And that's what died on the cross. Are, are y'all there? So God turned 
turns away because he can't stand what? To look at sin because at that moment, Jesus had become sin. Are y'all, are y'all getting the common thread? Are y'all getting uh, the, the, the synergy, the continuity to, between the Old Testament and the New Testament? God is the same, right? And so Habakkuk says, you can't even tolerate wrong. Are y'all still there with me in 13? Here is 13b. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent? Oh my goodness. While the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves. Well, now here's a statement. God says, oh, you're calling yourself more righteous than your enemies. He says, no, you've been acting the same as the heathens. He says, that's the reason why I'm punishing you because of your disobedience. And you dare call yourself more righteous than the Babylonians? Are, are, are y'all there? How many times have we done that? We've looked uh, at somebody and we've compared down, right? Well, at least I'm not like that. And at least I'm not doing that. But the truth of the matter is we should compare up. We should compare up to Christ, right? And we all fall short when we compare up. Are, are, are y'all there? Are y'all there? When we compare up, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? So, 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 so that's his complaint. That's his complaint. That's his complaint. So let's go to chapter two of Habakkuk. Are, are y'all there with me? Let's go to chapter two. So here is the prophetic resolve, right? We had the prophetic complaint. Then we had the Lord's response. Then we had a second prophetic complaint. And now we have a prophetic resolve. Are y'all there? Habakkuk says, after all of his complaining, he says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. And I will look to see what he, the Lord, will say to me. And what answer I am to give to this complaint. Are, are y'all there? Are y'all there? He says, listen, he says, fine. You don't want to answer me, fine. You just want me to keep on, you know, complaining and complain. He says, I'm just going to wait and see. He says, I'm going to stand on my post. I'm going to stand on my post. And that's what happens with many of us. Uh, we become disgruntled with God. We become dismayed with God. Uh, we become disillusioned with God. And so we just, hey, we want to take our ball and go home. But he says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. He says, I'm going to stand right here, God, until you answer me. I'm going to see how you're going to do this. I'm going to see how you're going to answer me. So now we have prophetic complaint, uh, the Lord's response prophetic complaint. Uh, and then we have prophetic resolve, right? That I'm just going to acquiesce. Now we have what next? I'm going to wait for you to put the answer in there because it's a formula. So what should come next? I'm going to wait. What should come next? What's the formula? We have prophetic complaint, the Lord's answer. Prophetic complaint, right? Then we have a prophetic resolve, right? And then we should have what next? There you go. All right, Lady Brown, you got it. Ding, 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 ding. The Lord's answer. So here we go. Then the Lord replied. Are y'all there? We're in 2-2. Two, two. We're in 2-2. Two, two. Chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Lord replied. And many of you are going to jump on this because you, you, you quote it all the time. You've just been quoting it out of context. What does it say? Write the vision. Make it plain. I, I know, I know. Many of you, many of you have said this. You've used it as your mission statement, all of this. But now you see how it fits in context, right, of what the complaint was. This is God's response to Habakkuk's complaint. He says, write down the revelation that you get. Write down the vision. That's what that means. Write down the revelation as you are watching, as you are listening to me, right? Now look at this. Look at this. 
Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets. In other words, don't keep it to yourself. When you get a revelation from me, come on, share it. Watch this. He says, though that a herald may run with it for the revelation, for the vision, right? Awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end. Are, are y'all there? It says, so God will, watch this, hear you complain, hear me complain and respond to us. The problem is how do we receive God's response if it is not what we wanted to hear? Are, are you there? I, I, hope I'm, I hope I'm teaching tonight. What do we do when God does respond, but we just don't like what God said? right? God says, write down the vision, make it plain so that people who are running by, right, can read it, right? It speaks of the end. It'll tell you what's going to happen and it will not prove false. I, I don't know if we'll get to it tonight, but the sign of a real prophet was that whatever they prophesied came to pass. Are you right? And it says, and will not prove false. He says, though it linger, though it tarry, may be in some of your uh, pieces. Uh, though it linger, though it tarry, wait for it. Don't be in such a hurry, right? Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Are you there? He says, though it linger, wait for it. I know we're all waiting on the vaccine. I know we're all waiting on, hey, when can I come out of my house and it's safe and I don't want to have to wear a mask? Wait for it, right? Oh, we need to open back up the state. We need to open back up the country. Listen, can I tell you what a blessing it's been for things to be shut down? What? Oh, uh, you can actually see mountaintops again. You can actually see animals in their natural habitat because humans aren't hunting them right? And out destroying them. Are you there? It says, listen, though it linger, though it tarry, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Are, are y'all, are y'all there? Are, are y'all there? So when you quote that scripture again, write the vision, make it plain. Now you have a contextual, right? Foundation for what that means. That was in response to a complaint. God doesn't mind you complaining, but you better be ready for the answer. Uh-huh. So, so, so now do you see how God is consistent uh, in that? He says, I'm going to use your enemies to chastise you. Are, are y'all there? Okay. So now can we, can we go back to Jeremiah or do you have any questions about that piece? I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to wanna hang out. If you have any questions, if you have any comments about that piece, I don't want to take us too far or too fast, right? Because I want to take us back to Jeremiah. All right. Okay. I'll keep looking. Okay, let's let's make our way back. Let's wake make make our way back to Jeremiah. I have no idea what time it is. But I'm going to teach until y'all sign off. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Here we go. We're in 26. We're in 26. We're in 26. Jeremiah has just uh, said, hey, if y'all kill me, uh, get, get ready. Get ready for the wrath. Get ready for the wrath. So we're back in Jeremiah. Find yourself, thank you, Nikki. Uh, find yourselves uh, in Jeremiah 26. Man, I love teaching like this. This, this just, this just makes my heart glad. All right, are we back? Are we back? 26:16. That's where we are. 26:16. I'll give you a minute. You back there? Then the officials. And all the people said to the priest and the prophets, this man should not be sentenced to death. He has spoken to us in the name of the Lord, our God. Now, take a look at it. Do we remember uh, when God promised Jeremiah uh, in chapter 2 
uh, that they will fight against you, but I will rescue you, right? We know God works through human agency. Are, are you there? God works through human agency. So some of the elders, we're in 17 now, some of the elders of the land stepped forward and said to the entire assembly of people, Micah of Moresheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. He told all of the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Uh, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem, which was the high place, will become a heap of rubble. The temple hill, a mound overgrown with thickets. He says, listen, this is not the first time you've heard this. So quit acting brand new. Don't hate on Jeremiah because he's giving you the truth again. Are, are y'all there? He says that Hezekiah, king of Judah, or anyone else in Judah put him to death. We're in 19. Did not Hezekiah fear the Lord and seek his favor? And did not the Lord relent so that he did not bring disaster he promised against them? Are, are y'all there? He says, we're about to bring a terrible disaster on ourselves. I think that's where we stopped last week. So, so if you'll allow me uh, to keep pushing us uh, to chapter 27, Jeremiah chapter 27, uh, I want to get to where it's now being concretized. Are y'all, y'all still there with me? Y'all still there with me? Somebody give me a thumbs up or something. Uh, where it's going to be concretized that Judah will serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. All right. Can somebody give me a thumbs up? All right, great, great, great. Thank you. All right, so early in the reign, we're in verse one, early in the reign of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord said to me. Make a yoke out of straps and crossbars and put it on your neck. God was always telling uh, his prophets to uh, almost do little skits and what have you. Put put crazy stuff on and, and God was going to make it as a metaphor for something he was trying to get across. All right. He says, then we're in three. Then send word to the kings of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Sidon through the envoys who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah. He says, give them a message for their masters and say, are y'all still with me? This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, tell this to your masters. With my great power and outstretched arm, I made the earth and its people and the animals that are in it. Watch this. God is giving you now his resume. God is now uh, running it down. In case y'all think y'all running something, let me tell you who created the heavens and the earth. Watch what God says. I don't want you to miss this. I made the earth and its people. That's reminiscent of the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. That's from good old King James, right? He says, and I give it to anyone I please. Oops. Oops. Wait a minute. No, God, because see, we're your children. So all of that should belong to us. Anything you have uh, should belong to us. So wait a minute. What are you talking about now uh, that, that you created all of this and you can give it to anybody you please? Who else would you give it to but your children? Well, I gave it to y'all. I gave it, oh man, can I go back to Genesis for a moment? He says, I gave it to my chosen first. He says, be fruitful and multiply. I've given you the earth to do anything uh, that you would like to do with it as long as it's in my will. He said, and you messed it up. So yeah, uh-huh, yeah, I can give it to anybody I please. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. He says, now I will hand, watch this. I will hand all your countries over to my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Are y'all watching this? Are y'all watching this? He keeps calling Nebuchadnezzar his servant, although Nebuchadnezzar would never say that he serves the Lord. But God says, listen, everything is under my rule. Everything is under my control. He says, and I'll make even the wild animals subject to him. Man, this is rich. 
All nations will serve him and his son and his grandson until the time for his land comes. And then many nations and great kings will subjugate him. Are, are y'all there? We're in eight. If, however, any nation or kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow its neck under his yoke, I will punish that nation with the sword, famine, and plague. Watch this, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your mediums, or your sorcerers who tell you you will not serve the king of Babylon. Now, let me tell you how important this is. Let me tell you how important this is. God says, don't you listen to people after it has already been prophesied. prophesied after I've already told you, I'm going to use my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, what? To put you in captivity, to chastise you, to punish you for 70 years. He says, don't you listen to anybody else who says the opposite because they won't be telling you the truth. Y'all, can I contemporize the text? We have had, come on now, experts, people who know the body, who know sales, who, who know molecular structure and all of this. The healthcare folks are telling us what's going on with this virus, right? But who is it that's giving the press conferences? Politicians, right? Business people, people who have what? Monetary gain on their mind and not helping people on their mind. God says, you better not listen to anybody who tells you something opposite of the ones who really know what's going on. Come, come on, come on, come on. So, so, so when the doctor starts saying what's really happening, that there is going to be a second wave of, of this coronavirus, uh, all of a sudden uh, they get taken away from the mic, right? And then politicians start coming to the mic, right? And saying, oh no, we're just about over this. We've, we've peaked. When less than 1% of the nation has been tested, how can we possibly be past it? Come on, I'm just trying to help you connect the dots now. God says, yeah, you can, you can listen to anybody you want to, uh, but here, here is what's going to be your ruin, that if you don't listen to the people that I've assigned, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be in trouble. It's, it's right here in the text. It's, it's right here in the text. It's, it's right here in the text. Uh, he says, so, so if you don't think for a moment uh, that you're going to serve Nebuchadnezzar, oh yeah, you will. You will. You will. Y'all still with me there? Uh, let, let's take a look at verse, verse 10. Uh, verse 10. He says, they prophesy lies to you. Lord have mercy. They prophesy lies to you that will only serve to remove you far from your lands. He says, listen, he says, if you listen to those lies, you're going to be in worse shape than you were already. Watch this. He says, wait, and these people are going to seem credible. So in this season, child of God, in this season, we've got to be in the word of God. We've got to be uh, in prayer to God to discern who is speaking truth. Are, are you with me? He, he says, but if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let that nation remain in its own land to till it and to live there, declares the Lord. Wow, y'all, I could, whew, I, I could, I could, I could, I could keep, I could keep going. Uh, uh, get, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Listen, this is the Lord. This is the Lord still saying, I gave the same message to Zedekiah, king of Judah. I said, bow your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. In other words, pay attention, y'all, to this virus. Don't, don't think that you're stronger than it is, right? Cover your mouth. Cover your face, right? Wear a mask. Wear a face covering. Wash your hands, right? This is what God is saying. God is saying, listen, uh, uh, be still and understand I'm doing something with this virus. So don't think for a moment uh, that you're going to somehow overcome it just because you don't feel like listening or you want to get back into the workplace and you want to go back to partying and holding weekend barbecues. God says, you better listen because I'm doing something here. I'm working here, says the Lord. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? 
right? All of this foolishness that people are coming up with. God says, you better pay attention. He says, I am making a way for this to happen. He says, because the only way to root out all of this madness, all of this disobedience, he's talking about his people now. He's not talking about heathens. He said, in order to get my people back on track, I'm going to use this virus. This is what I truly believe in my heart of hearts. I'm going to use this virus to get us back to the basics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, so listen. He says, listen. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who say to you, you won't serve the king of Babylon, for they are prophesying lies to you. I have not sent them. Hear me. So we have all these people who are saying, oh, you're trampling on, on, my, on my First Amendment right uh, to congregate and to assemble and, and all of that. I think that's the First Amendment. Uh, and so we want to go back to church. God says, don't you listen to them. Don't, don't you listen to them. Don't, don't let them kill you. He says, they will seem credible because they say they wear my name. But he said, if you would just listen to them, you would really see that they are not of me. Are, are you there? He says very soon, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, then I said to the priests and all these people, we're in 16. This is what the Lord says. Don't listen to the prophets very soon. Now the articles from the Lord's house will be brought back from Babylon they are prophesying lies to you. So in other words, one of the, one of the uh, symbols uh, that everything was going to be all right is that everything that had been taken out of the temple in Jerusalem and carried to Babylon would soon be brought back. That means that God was going to restore the temple because all the accoutrements of worship and for worship were bring bought brought back. He says, don't you believe uh, when they say that all the articles uh, from the Lord's house will be brought back uh, from Babylon? They are prophesying lies to you. How many times is God saying they are prophesying lies to you? He says, do not listen to them. How many times has God said, do not listen to them? Serve the king of Babylon and you will live. Doesn't that sound weird? That God is saying, serve, serve your enemy. We're, we're going to get into more of that next week. He says, why should this city become a ruin? He said that they are prophets. Are, are y'all there in 18? Just let me know you're there. He says, if they are prophets, we're in 27, 18. If they are prophets and have the word of the Lord, let them plead with the Lord, not the governor, not the mayor. Wish I had some help here. Not the president. If they are prophets and have the word of the Lord, let them plead with the Lord Almighty that the furnishings remain in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem, uh, not be taken to Babylon. He says, for this is what the Lord Almighty says about the pillars, the sea the movable stands and the other furnishings. So these are all the things that you could find in the temple. All right. So when he's talking about the sea, capital S, these are all the things that you would find in the, um, uh, in the description of the temple. All right. Furnishings that are left in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take away when he carried Jehoiakim. Remember, I told you to remember that son of Jehoiakim king of Judah into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon along with all the other nobles. So this is where, uh, just make a little note, uh, this is uh, reminiscent that you will find they're talking about when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, were taken. Remember when they took all the nobles, when they took all the highly intellectual uh, people because they wanted to turn them into Babylonians. All right? Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Give, give, me, give me five more minutes. And I know you said, where do we have to go? But I really do want to honor your time. We're in 28 because I ask you to read ahead. All right? I ask you to read ahead. And I just want you to see this false prophet, Hananiah. This false prophet, Hananiah. Here we go. You guys still see me all right? Okay. There we go. Okay. Going to wrap up in a minute. In the fifth month of that same year, the fourth year, early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah 
son of Azur, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people. Watch this now. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. Y'all, y'all, now remember, 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 in chapter 25, the Lord was speaking, hear this now, to Jeremiah. He clearly said that you will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. Are, are y'all there? For 70 years. Here comes this false prophet, hear this now, saying what the people wanted to hear. He's saying two years. Can, can I contemporize the text? Can I bring us to 2020? So, so we have some folks saying, listen, we may not be out of this thing until September. Uh, but the people want to hear uh, by mid-May. Come on, come on, come on. I, I, I want you to see this. By, by, by mid-May, right? Right. God clearly said, listen, you're going to be here 70 years. Right. A false prophet comes along and says two years. Are, are y'all there? So now can I take you to Deuteronomy? Man, this man, this is so good. This is getting so good to me. Uh, can I take you to, to Deuteronomy? Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18. You'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. Deuteronomy 18. Y'all still got good, good light. Y'all still have uh, good sound. Y'all good? Let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Uh, and uh, let's go to 19. Verse 19. Verse 19. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you there? Deuteronomy 18. Thank you. Thank you, those of you who are, who are scribing tonight and help us keep up. Thank you so much. Deuteronomy 18. Let's go there. Let's see. I may need to back up for a minute. Let's go back to 17 real quick. Let's go back to 17. Lisa, tell them 17. All right. We're going to 1817. This is where God is talking about how you can tell who's a real prophet or not. All right. If you're there, say amen. Listen, the Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth. That's reminiscent of what he told Jeremiah, remember? And he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone, watch this in 19, if anyone does not listen to my words, that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods must be put to death. Are you there? Let's keep going to 21. You may say to yourselves, how can we know? Oh my God, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? Y'all need to underline that. You need to ask yourselves that all the time. When we talk about try the spirit, by the spirit, but you've got to have the right spirit in you. We have to have the right spirit in us in order to gauge or discern what? The wrong spirit. We have to have the right spirit within us. Are, are y'all there? Are y'all there? Are y'all there? Are y'all there? So Stan, you're going to have to go back and get all the rest of this. Amen. So we may say to ourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? Here it is in 22. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place 
or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. Are, are, are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Are, are y'all with me? Because, because, because here's the truth. Here's the truth, y'all. The existence of prophets uh, during the reign uh, of the monarchy uh, necessitated a means by which uh, to distinguish between a true prophet and a false one. Are you with me? That that that's the reason why, uh, y'all. I'm a I'm a I'm a textual preacher. I'm a textual teacher. I always point you back to the Word of God. Always tell you to research for yourselves, uh, so you'll know whether or not it's my opinion, right? And to research to make sure what I'm rightly dividing, right? That that's that. That, that's all I know to do. It's not just enough to listen to me. You have to study to show your own self. I wish I had some help. Approved unto God, right? A workman needed not being ashamed. So let's take a look at this. So turbulent times. Are we in turbulent times? Turbulent times during which the people wanted to hear words of hope and security uh, produced outbreaks of profits for hire. Yeah, that's right. I can show it to you in scripture where they hired their own prophets to tell them what they wanted to hear. They would hire their own prophets. They would hire their own seers who would tell them optimistic lies. Come on, y'all. Are we hearing any optimistic lies in this day and time? Come on. Yeah, go back to the barbershop. Go back to the beauty shop. Go back to the nail shop. Ain't no way you can keep a six-foot distance in between you and a masseuse, you and a nail tech, you and a hairdresser, you and a bar. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me here? So so it says don't 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 fall for this or or it says uh yeah you can go back to church but you have to have only 25% uh of your congregation that can show up right so now who's going to decide who gets to come so some of y'all come on first and third and the other of y'all come on second and fourth come on, that's foolishness are y'all are y'all hearing and so let's not go out and hire our own prophets. That's, that's what they're doing from the White House to the State House. They're hiring their own prophets. They're getting uh, their own experts to come and lie to the American people, to come and lie to the Texan people, to come and lie. Come on now to, to the folks of the county, to the folks of the city saying it's going to be all right. I just want you to see that there is nothing new under the sun. Uh, this has been happening a long time. Are, are y'all there? All right, all right. Let's go back to Jeremiah real quick and then we'll wrap up. 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 Man, this is good to me tonight. Lord have mercy. It's good to me tonight. We're gonna be we're gonna be traveling in uh uh hey ambassador battle. Uh we're gonna be traveling uh in chapter twenty nine on next week. So so can I wrap up with Hananiah? Can I wrap up with Hannah and I? Y'all still, y'all still can see me okay? You can still, what, uh, hear me okay? All right, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is Hannah and I talking. This is what the Lord Almighty says, the God of Israel. I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back uh, to this place all the articles of the Lord's house. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. Uh, I will also bring back to this place Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim, uh, king of Judah, and all the other exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now, <clears throat> Here we go, 28.5. Are y'all are y'all with me? 28.5. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. Now, this is where you have to be bold in the Lord. You have to be secure in what the Lord has called you to do because you're there at the press conference. Come on now, you're standing up here in these lies and you're up next and you have to decide whether or not you're going to speak truth or you are going to try in some fashion, uh, try to agree with what that idiot just said. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying you, we have to, we have to make a decision y'all. If we're going to be on the Lord's side, regardless of what we think it may cost us. Are, are y'all there? Jeremiah was clear because God had already shown him in chapter one and in chapter two, you're going to have to, you're going to have some harsh words to say. They're not going to like it. They're going to fight against you but they will not overcome you. He says, and you better not be afraid of them or else I will terrify you in front of them. So God is saying, here it is. Holy Spirit is whispering in Jeremiah. He, he said, here, here, here is your day. Here's where the rubber has met the road, right? Here's where push has come to shove, right? Jeremiah speaks up and he replies to the prophet Hananiah. Because once again, they've been to the same seminary. I wish I had some help here. They've gone to the same seminary. They have the same seminary degree. So people are saying, hey, Hananiah is just as credible as Jeremiah. And Jeremiah has to stand in the house of the Lord. And this is what he says. Are y'all there with me? 28.6. He said, amen. May the Lord do so. I'll be glad to get out of here in two years. Watch the text. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people from early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war disaster and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Watch this. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. Now, do y'all see? Do y'all see now why the Lord had Jeremiah put that yoke on? See, see, you, 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 you kind of missed it. And in 27, and 27, it says, this is what the Lord says, make a yoke out of straps and crossbars and put it on your neck. So he was trying to show them in a physical sense what would be happening to them right? In the spiritual and the actual. So he put a yoke on him. For those of you, I'll tell you about what a yoke is next week. Uh, Cause I'm a country girl. And we used to put yokes on cows so they wouldn't get out right of their pasture. Right? So Jeremiah had a yoke uh, to symbolize what the people of Judah would be going through. So here we go. Then the prophet Hananiah, took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And he said before all the people, this is what the Lord says. And the same way will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went on his way. Here we go in 12. We're wrapping up. Shortly after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all. Okay. 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 I'll try to contain myself. Uh, uh, the Lord says, you go back and tell Hananiah this. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place, you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord, look at this. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I will even give him control over the wild animals. Look at this. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you yet. You have persuaded this nation to trust in lies y'all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't think I even have to expound upon that. I think y'all already y'all got that. He says, therefore, 
This is what the Lord says. I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This, this is not the CJV. This is the NIV. That's not me saying that, right? This very year, you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. Watch this in 17. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah, the prophet, died. So ends the reading of chapter 28 of the book of Jeremiah. Uh, my brothers and my sisters tonight, if you are listening, I couldn't have planned to be teaching Jeremiah at this time. Uh, I want us to really be serious about our walk with the Lord, not just in this time, but if we, if we would ever be serious about what we're doing in the kingdom, now would be a good time. I believe God is speaking to us in this season from the book of Jeremiah. God is saying, and we're going to see in 29, I believe 29 is going to bless you. But I really would love for you to go back uh, and read this. But here's the truth. It's just not preachers and pastors that God is counting on to speak truth. God is counting on his children. Come on, just, just, just regular people. Not, not just me, but for those of you who, who trust in this Bible, who trust in the Lord, who trust in the name of the Lord. He's expecting all of us to speak truth and, and dispute lies wherever we hear them. And we have to have that holy boldness in order to do it. We're going to see a lot of things come out because, uh, once again, I keep saying this is based on commerce and not on compassion. Uh, when people cannot uh, even get tested to find out uh, if, if they have the virus or not. Uh, we, can't, we can't congregate yet. So I'll tell everybody uh, who is listening now, please hear me, everybody who is listening now, uh, move with discernment. Every pastor, every preacher, move with discernment. Because here's the truth, we're actually growing. There are people who are watching, who are listening, who are delving into the word of the Lord, who would not be if they were not shut in, right? And shut out. So, so, th so this is the time. This is the time to pray. This is the time to develop your prayer life. This is the time to develop uh, a discipline for reading the word of God every day. This is the time uh, to ask God to give you a discerning spirit. Or are you there with me? And so I, I, I want us not to be fooled by Please hear me. I want people to be able to make a living. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ignorant to that. And I understand policy. Please hear me. But, but, but if you take people back and put them back in and they're positive and asymptomatic, because there will be some of us, you guys, who will have this, not know it, right? But will infect others. Are you with me? And we won't know until we get an antibody test that says, yeah, the virus was within us, but for whatever reason, our system, our immune system fought it off. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, let's be, let's be diligent. And, 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 and here would be a good time to protest. Here would be a good time uh, to write letters uh, because if people don't hear from you, guess what? They think you agree with them. Are, are, are you with me? So, so tonight, understand, there will be false prophets. Uh, there, there will be people who can be bought off. There are doctors who can be bought off. There are scientists who can be bought off. There are researchers who can be bought off. Uh, uh, hirelings, hirelings for an economic agenda because there is an election coming up. And, and this particular person, 45, the occupant uh, of the White House right now, uh, built his whole campaign on the economy. And the economy is now tanked, right? Millions of people out of work, right? Everything, everything that we've worshipped, God has brought down. God says, you will see me for who I am. 
that, that's, that's the chastisement of God always, to see God for who he is. And then maybe we can see ourselves for who we are. Listen, I, I, I love you. I, I, I love you. I, this, is, this is an exciting time uh, for me as a pastor, an exciting time for me as a child of God. And I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep teaching uh, as the Lord gives me utterance. Uh, and I won't be afraid to do so. Yeah, we're feeding people uh, physical food, but I believe at this time my greatest strength, my greatest call, my greatest assignment uh, is to feed people the word of God, to eat it myself so that I can be fortified against anything that might come up against us. And I can tell you unequivocally, St. John Northwest Church will not be meeting in person anytime soon. So we are trying everything we can to keep everybody connected, to have meaningful experiences. Listen, I will try anything technologically uh, to uh, bring us together. If we have to hang out every day, if I got to be on Zoom and just tell you to join me and have, you know, a, a, a hello session, I'm willing to do that. But I do not want you to go back uh if, if, you, if you can help it, if you're retired, stay home. If you can work from home, do just that. I know there are many of us who are on the front lines. You're doctors and nurses. Uh, you have things that you have to do in the public domain. You can't stay home. We are praying for your safety. We are praying uh, that God will protect you and, and spiritually inoculate you whereby you don't get sick, that this virus won't come near you. That is my prayer in Jesus' name, that your families will be well. Yeah, that, that if you do get it, right, that you'll be healed, you'll be restored. That is my prayer in Jesus' name. But we cannot go with what the current administration, national or state, is saying. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Be safe. So with that, uh, hey, it's Communion Sunday, first Sunday. Communion Sunday, first Sunday. Uh, and if you want to come by, I think I gave you enough communion cups to last you for two months. Uh, but if you didn't uh, come by, uh, come by. They'll be uh, carefully uh, wrapped and sealed and prayed over. And so I want you to come by this Saturday uh, from 12 to 2 and get your communion cup. Listen, uh, if you're being blessed uh, by this broadcast, um, if you uh, uh, have not uh, had a chance, uh, church members, uh, to give your tithe, to submit your offering, uh, you know that you can do so by Cash App, uh, dollar sign, uh, St. John, N-W-S-T-J-O-H-N-N-W. You know, you can also give uh, from our website. Go to our website, click Donate, uh, and you can also do Secure Give, or you can mail in uh, your ties. Many of you have been doing that. So thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. Amen. Uh, P.O. Box 41131. Somebody type that in as I'm saying it. P.O. Box 41131. Uh, Houston, Houston, Texas 77241. Send it to St. John uh, Northwest Church. Amen. Listen. Uh, I want to pray with you. If you have a prayer request, why don't you just type it in? Type it in. Uh, thank y'all. You know, y'all, I don't spend a whole lot of time in my front yard, uh, but I am I am loving this. So thank you for pushing the envelope. Uh, thank God for pushing me out because my Wi-Fi doesn't work in my house. Lord, have mercy. Uh, so, yeah, if you'd like to give, why don't we pray right now over our offering? Gracious God, thank you uh, for those who have a heart and a mind to give, even have the means to give. Uh, Father, we thank you for the faithfulness uh, your people have shown uh, towards 
forth the support of your church, God, the support of your word going out in the earth. And so, God, whether they're giving out of little or whether they're giving out of much, God, bless each hand, bless each heart, bless each bank account, bless each house, oh God. God, return, oh God, as you said you would, not just in finances, but return in good health, uh, return in peaceful sleep, oh God, return in harmony and reconciliation in their houses. God, however you want to bless us, God, for being obedient in our giving to you, do it all in the name of Jesus. We bless you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Okay, praying for the Parks family. What's the, uh, praying for the Parks family. Okay, and the Deckard family. All right, God bless you. Uh, Tasha, the cash app is dollar sign S-T-J-O-H-N-N-W. Dollar sign S-T-J-O-H-N-N-W. All right, the Isaac household. All right, we got you. We got you. Thank you, Sister Margie. Always good to see you. Hey, Sister Deal, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Remember, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you before we get off the phone. Thank you. Thank you, Tarshua. Want to pray for you. Want to pray for you. Want to pray for you. Uh, thank you uh, for all of our great friends. Amen. From Atlanta, uh, Florida, uh, Detroit, uh, L.A. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Margie Cephas. God bless you. Amen. Sister Ann, amen. Praying for the Powell family. Amen. Prayer for Nashville. Uh, thank you, Sister Phyllis. Amen. Praying for Beaumont. Amen. Amen. Praying for Galveston. Phyllis Moore. Amen. Amen. Praying for the Epps family and the Hill family. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hey, Dr. Tiffany, God bless you. Glad you could get on tonight. Glad you could get on tonight. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere, so just keep keep typing in, keep typing in uh, your prayer request, typing in the Stevenson, Jones, Roberts, Butler, and Sturgis family. All right, Sister Brenda, amen. We're going to lift all of these uh, off uh, of the post, and we will uh, post them on Sunday, even for our, amen, praying for our essential workers, absolutely, all of our health care workers. All the folks who are having to go in uh, hospitals and, you know, people are still working in restaurants. Uh, yeah. Uh, manufacturing. Manufacturing. Margie Foster. Uh, Where City. Okay. P.O. Box 41131. Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. From Oregon. I remember from Oregon, Dr. Burke. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, Margie Foster, uh, 77241. Uh, Tarsha, if you would put that up uh, and post it, the Moore and Gilbert families. Praying for Salitha Swanson. Praying for the Henderson family. Amen. Praying for janitors. Yes. Praise the Lord. So what, others that we don't think about. Amen. Praying for janitors who are also having to clean up. Uh, and being exposed to it. Amen. Praying for Ebony Armstrong. Uh, lost her mother. Mother passed uh, this past week. Uh, praying for her and lifting her up. Also lifting up the Holmes family. Uh, Kia Holmes, uh, who's had, hey, Willie Jackson, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, my UT classmate. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shannara, for doing that. 77241. Hey, Minister Sonia, God bless you. Praying for treasure. Amen. Amen. Hey, Sister Montre, Reverend Montre, God bless you. Praying for Treasure Jackson. Uh, Reverend Johnny Green from Detroit, one of the ministers of Tabernacle. Pastor Nathan Johnson, my former pastor out of Galveston. Amen. Uh, still praying for baby Riley Joy Brennius. Amen. She's now home. Amen. Praying for uh, little Josiah, who was just born uh, a couple of weeks ago. Amen. Praying for him praying for him. Thank you for those of you who are giving, uh, giving information. Amen. 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 You guys pray for my mom. My mom's doing well, but just keep her in your prayers and my family. Amen. Pray for your pastor. Hallelujah. All right. Little Rock, Arkansas. All right. Sister Stevenson, God just led, okay, to this site tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, people are joining in from all 
over the country. Amen. Oh, your former church, uh, Dr. Henry. God bless you. Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's pray out. Let's pray out. All right. Before everybody leaves, let's pray out. Gracious God, now we bless these, your people, uh, all the names that they have submitted, God, and even the ones they kept within their hearts. Uh, we are believing right now, God, that you're moving and acting on their behalf. God, show us uh, what you're doing in this season, God. And if we don't see it right away, God, if it tarries, oh God, uh, let us wait for you. Uh, and wait in patience and wait in faith. Uh, we love you today, God, and we thank you for this study. Thank you for folks who are joining in, oh God, just passing through. And so we honor you now, God, that you said that we would go into all the world, oh God, and teach all nations, oh God. And we thank you, God, that you're giving us an opportunity to reach uh, beyond the physical church. So God bless everybody tonight. Give them sweet rest. God bless this nation. Lord, have mercy. Bless this nation, oh God. God, let leadership rise up, oh God. Uh, not even from in where we would think it would come from, but let leadership rise up, oh God, and be a voice of reason. Maybe it's somebody on the line, but God, give us boldness to speak truth in this season, oh God regardless of who we have to speak it to. And then God, give your people discernment, oh God, of how they should move about in light of orders being rescinded, uh, of uh, restrictions um, uh, being, uh, uh, restrictions expiring, oh God. And so just give us good sense uh, and then give us good resolve that we're in your hands. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray people of God said, amen, 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 amen. God bless you tonight. Uh, this has been uh, such a rich night uh, for me. Let's come back. Uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be online. No, we'll be, we'll be in our corporate prayer call on Friday, corporate prayer call on Friday. All right. Uh, join us, join us online. Amen. Join us on, keep saying online. Join us on our prayer call, which is a conference call. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Tony. God bless you. It's timely for me, too. Amen. Um, uh, thank you, Brother Doug. God bless you. God bless you. For those of you who are still on the line and your members, your Life Bill group leaders, I'm going to send out a mass text. Your Life Bill group leaders will be asking you, calling you, texting you, and asking you for your email addresses. There's some information uh, that's just too much to put into a text. Uh, so if you would be so kind to give them your email address, they're asking on my behalf. Uh, and so give them your email address and uh, we will make notations of it and send you out information. Love you too, Jane. Amen. Amen. Brother Lonnie, man, it's good to see you. So good to see you. Sister LeBlanc, God bless you. Good to see you, baby. All right. Uh, what passage of scripture to read for next week? Next week, Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Hey, Brother Willie, uh, tell, tell my girl Leanne I said, hey, and we're still praying for her and thinking about her, all right? All right. Good night, Sister Simon. Uh, Tanya Belton. Amen. Amen. Invited by uh, uh, Minister Cheryl. Amen. God bless you. Good night, Sister Ann. God bless you. God bless you. We're hanging in. All right. Listen, we're signing off. You guys keep typing in if you have prayer requests. Uh, want you to uh, keep moving. Amen. Jeremiah 29. That's where we're going to be uh, next week. All right. That's where we're going to be next week. All right. Look forward to it. Read ahead. See what the Lord will say to us. I'm going to start packing up. Amen. Hey, Dominique, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, I'm just I'm just chilling. I'm hanging out. Y'all y'all are making me get outside, but I'm going to start wrapping up. All right, we're signing off. God bless you tonight. Love you so much. And look forward to hearing from you on Friday. Uh, if you want to come by and pick up your communion cup, I'll be there on Saturday. Uh, and then, of course, Sunday, uh, we'll be in worship 
and communion with one another on our first Sunday. All right. All right, Sister Carly, y'all take care. God bless. Hey, Brother Carl and Sister Eunice, glad to see you guys on tonight. Warms my heart uh, that you're on, that you're on. Crystal Davis, listen, did you tell our baby that we gave him a shout out on Sunday? Tell him, want to hear them. Love you too, Brother Frank, Brother Deborah, uh, Sister Patrice. God bless you. God bless you. Take care, y'all. Signing out. Bye-bye.